Naming and writing the formula for ionic compounds is a very important skill to have in chemistry, um, especially before you start to write chemical equations and predicting products of those equations. We're going to go through how to write um, ionic compounds. Uh, I'm going to go through how to write the formula and name the compound. For an ionic compound to exist, it has to have a cation and an anion. The cations are typically metals, not always, but typically they're metals off the periodic table. So anything that is to the left of the metalloids. The metals can carry a specific charge, like calcium is going to be a 2 plus. However, someone like copper or an element like copper could have a plus 1 or a plus 2. So you're going to need to have a list of those ions readily available. The other thing you're going to have is an anion. The anion could be a nonmetal element that has gained electrons. So for the halogen family, for example, they'll gain one electron and chlorine will turn into chloride. Or you might have what are called polyatomic ions and for those you'll have to memorize those or you'll need a list of those um, to be able to write and name ionic compounds correctly. So we're going to start with the cation calcium and the anion chloride. Uh, so again, we're going to have the calcium uh, ion and the chloride ion. Um, I've used cards with the size of the charge so that you follow the major rule of ionic compounds is that the net charge has to equal zero. So for every one calcium ion, one chloride ion will not equal zero. You'll have a, a, an extra plus charge right now, so two plus plus one minus would not equal zero, it equal one plus. So you're going to need a second chloride ion so that you have two negative charges total plus a two plus charge with the one calcium and that would give you a net charge of zero. So to write that correctly then, a chemist uses subscripts. So you would have Ca, Cl, the metal is first or the cation is first and the anion is second in the formula. And then you're going to need to denote that you have two of those chloride ions, and so that's why that um, subscript is there. It is not there because chlorine is diatomic. It is there because you need two chloride ions for every one calcium ion. And then naming them is probably the easiest part so far. You just have to name the uh, metal the cation, which is calcium, and then you name the anion, which is chloride, because again it has gained an electron and turned into a 1 minus. So that's our first example. Our second example and third example look very similar. They both have the element lead, um, but the charge must be different because sulfur turning into sulfide is always a 2 minus. On the periodic table it is two electrons away from having a noble gas configuration, so it's going to gain two electrons. And since sulfur as sulfide is always 2 minus, and there's only one lead, that must mean that the lead carries a 2 plus charge. So what we're going to do is say that our cation is lead 2 plus, and our anion is sulfide, which is a 2 minus. Because lead can come in another charge, which is obvious in our next example, I'm going to do that one along with this one to show you the difference. This one is saying that there's two sulfides. So that must mean that that one lead that's there has twice as much charge as the other lead ion. Um, so that means it's a lead four to match the four minus of those two sulfides together. So since there are two charges for lead, we have to denote which one we have. So lead as a 2 plus is different than lead as a 4 plus because again those formulas are not the same. You can see by these structures. So what chemists decided to do is use Roman numerals or you could even use the Latin names. Um, plum us for the lower charge and ick, plum ick is for the higher charge and that's something that'll stay consist consistent. So OUS is for the lower charge and ick is for the higher. So over here when we name them we have to say which one we have. So we have lead 2 in Roman numerals and then sulfide 
or we need to say that we have lead, and we don't need to say that we have two sulfides, we just need to say which lead we have, lead, and then the Roman numeral for four, sulfide. The other thing you can do is you can use those, um, what are called Latin names, and so I'm gonna put those underneath here in a different color. You could call this plum us sulfide, or you could call this one plum ick sulfide. Moving on to the next example, we have a new issue. The new issue is that we're using a polyatomic ion. Sulfate, you'll have to either memorize or look up, is SO4 2 minus. It's this ion right here. And then aluminum is a set charge, and it's always uh, 3 plus. And again, its periodic placement um, right here is going to show that it's going to lose 3 electrons. And so we have a three plus and a two minus. So for the net charge to equal zero, um, they have to have a common multiple. And what that multiple is, is six plus and six minus. So when we write this one, we're gonna need to say that we have three sulfates and two aluminum ions. So we're gonna need to use something different this time, which are using parentheses to denote the structure that we made. So we will need two aluminums and then we would need three sulfates, so you'll need to put that polyatomic ion in parentheses. Only polyatomic ions need parentheses, not the ions that are what are called monatomic. So you do not need parentheses around the aluminum to say that there's two. You only need parentheses around the sulfate to say that how many you have, which in this case is three. This next example includes parentheses and some um, metals with two charges, so if you'd like to give that a try before I do that one, I'm going to pause for a second. In this case, we have copper, which is two plus, and we have copper, which is one plus. So for the one plus ion, we only need one nitrate, but for the two plus ion, we need two nitrates. So again, this makes two different possible compounds because of the different charges of the copper. So I'm gonna write down the formulas for these. So again, CuNO3 for the first one, but then Cu parentheses NO3 and then a two to denote that second one again. Remember that that one needed two nitrates to have a net charge of zero. And because it's a polyatomic ion, we need to have the parentheses. Now, copper two is called copper two with the Roman numeral two or cupric. And copper one is called cuprus, or with the Roman numeral one. So when we write the names for these, we're gonna have to say copper one, and then the polyatomic ion was nitrate, or in this case, we had copper two, Roman numeral two denotes the two plus charge, and then nitrate. Again, if you'd like to use the what are called the Latin naming, um, copper was uh, from cup, Pros, again, is the lower charge. So that is an alternative answer for this. Or cupric nitrate would be the higher charge of copper, which is the two plus. Uh, and that's how you name and write ionic compounds.